Call this meeting to order. Commissioner Fisher, if you would do the honors of leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America and, and to, to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Just a reminder to all present that this meeting is a public forum. It is being recorded both video and audio and written minutes are being taken. Any comments will become part of the meeting record and available to the public at a later date. In this meeting, persons who wish to speak to the board will need to come to the podium. The recording doesn't work well if you speak from your seat, so please come to the podium. When you do, Introduce yourself by your name and your address. If you represent some other, other organization, please state that organization. Uh, there, will be, there is a time on the agenda for public comments other than those who are on the agenda. So at that point, if there's anyone that wishes to address the board, I would ask them to call to come forward. Are there any awards recognition? Melinda, anything? Thank you. We do have minutes from previous meetings, January 2nd, uh, January 9th, and February the 6th. Mr. Chair, I make a motion we approve the minutes. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes of January 2, January 9, and, and February the 6th. Is there any discussion? Those in favor, say aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Are there any additions to the agenda? <coughs> Is there any public input that wishes to, anybody here present that wishes to address the board on any matter other than an agenda item? Seeing none, we'll move to the business items on the agenda. And our first item is a, is a presentation by the State Parks District Manager. Good morning. My name is Matt Rippey. Uh, I'm, I'm the Eastern District Manager for Oregon Parks and Recreation Department. Um, I'm also here with Mark Miller, who is the Park Manager for Immigrant Springs State Park. Um, we mostly wanted to come and just introduce ourselves. We're both fairly new in our positions. Um, I've been with State Parks for about 17 years, um, but as the District Manager for just the last couple. And Mark. Um, started as the manager up at Immigrant Springs this last fall. And so a lot of it was just coming to introduce ourselves. Real quick, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, sure. but could we get another one? We have another commissioner who's on the phone. Absolutely. And that's, yeah. You Thank you very much. Got it. Uh, the, the other item that we just wanted to um, make you aware of is we're starting the master planning process for the state parks that are in Umatilla and Union County this year. It'll be about a year long process. Um, there'll be a couple of different public meetings. Um, we're putting together an advisory committee, and we do have uh, the Umatilla County Senior Planner is going to be on that advisory committee. So again, just more of an informational, uh, you know, to to uh, to meet you, and then also let you know about our master planning process. And then if you have any questions for us, we'd be happy to try and answer what we can. I don't think I've got any questions. I don't have any questions. Are you looking forward to a relatively mild fire season this year? We can we can hope. Yeah, it's one of those when it's a good <clears throat> snowpack year. It seems, you know, the 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 brush grows really thick and then dries out. So you never know if it's going to be good. But then when we have a drought season, you just never know either way. If we have good snowpack or bad. It's, it, it could go either way. But always prepared, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. I was told one time that hope is not a very good strategy. No, it's not. <laughs> That's for sure. Very good. And your offices are on Airport Road? Mine is in uh, LeGrand on Geckler, and then Mark's up at Immigrant Spring State Park. Oh, very good. Stop in sometime. Yeah. You never get a chance. Absolutely. Need to do that. Yeah. So. Very good. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank good you. To, good to meet you both. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on our agenda is a Solid Waste Advisory Committee Annual Report. I'm not that tall. 
right. Good morning, Commissioners. My name is Gina Miller. I am the staff liaison to the Solid Waste Advisory Committee. And I am very honored here to have with me today our sitting chair of the Advisory Committee, Mr. Dennis Olson, who is a former planning director for Umatilla County. And we have on uh, the agenda today two items. The first is our annual report, which is uh, something that we are uh, under ordinance required to provide to you, uh, Section 9.4 of the Umatilla County Solid Waste Management Plan. So again, I'd like to ask Mr. Olson to cover some highlights and we'll ask, answer any questions that you may have. Hi, this is Dennis Olson. I am the chair of the Solid Waste Commission. I understand Dennis, that you have already had... Dennis, your address, please. Your address. 757 Southeast Nut Hatch Drive. Thank you. <laughs> okay, in College Place, Washington, by the way. <laughs> uh, just, just a couple items on the, I understand you've already received the, the letter that's our, our annual report, and I would like to just address a couple of the items on there. First of all, uh, we did have a, a replacement. Uh, Susan was, was on the board for so many years, for 20 years, and uh, I have taken her, her position. However, her son is the, the vice chair, so... He knows more about garbage than I do, <laughs> so so I'm glad to have him on the board to, or with us. So uh, I will leave the rest to you. Thank you very much for approving the solid waste and the uh, the franchises for the for the year. And thank you very much. It's good seeing you again, Dennis. Thank you, Dennis. I've read uh, the uh, the report. It's a very good report. I appreciate the, uh, the, you coming to present it this morning. Well, it's very handy having, uh, having uh, personnel hand in hand like, <laughs> like Gina to, to do this for us. So our, our function this morning with the report is merely to acknowledge it and, and to acknowledge the receipt of it and do appreciate that very much. We do have you still on the agenda for a couple minutes as we move to the next item on the agenda, which is the solid waste franchise renewals. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioners. Um, one thing I did want to also point out from uh, the work that the committee did last year was, of course, the uh, implementation of the 2018 Household Hazardous Waste Collection event. That was a huge task undertaken by members of the committee and resulted in a very successful event. And we are going to be applying for that same uh, grant from DEQ to hold a similar event in 2020. And we've been assured by DEQ, as a result of our successes, that we will probably get that money. So keeping our fingers crossed, but like you say, hope is not the best plan. So we'll continue to work hard towards that. We did have about uh, 2,400 pounds of solid waste that was submitted for to the county. So that's a very good record. As a fact, it's one of the best in the state, if not the best in the state. Yes. All right, uh, on to franchise renewals. We have uh, four collection franchises in the county and four disposal franchises. Uh, Pendleton Sanitary has both a collection and a uh, uh, disposal franchise here in the Pendleton area. Humbert's Refuse has a uh, both a collection and a di uh, disposal franchise for the Milton Free Water Athena area, Helix. Um, and then Hermiston is a sanitary disposal, both a collection and a disposal franchise. And then we have Eastern Oregon Waste Management for the Pilot Rock Ukiah area. And then it, the Quality Compost is not a franchise in the in the strictest sense of the word for dis, you know for collection of our disposal site for uh, solid waste. They are a, a composting company, and as a result of DEQ guidelines and regulations, they were required to obtain a franchise from us. And so they don't really deal with with garbage in the sense of you know household garbage. They take only feedstocks and green stocks for their composting facility. But we still are required to evaluate them and have them renew every year. All the 
franchises are on a 10-year renewal basis. They have a 10-year franchise that is renewed yearly, and then it rolls forward for another 10 years. So all of the franchises have submitted their appropriate paperwork. Their insurance um, certification has been confirmed, and all fees are current and paid. So the committee met yesterday and voted unanimously to renew all of the franchises for another year. And we bring this to you now for your uh, vote of, of approval to renew all the franchises. The committee recommends them to be renewed. Questions? So, Gina, I, I saw on the uh, on the action sheet here on the pinky that there are four franchise applications, but there are actually seven contracts. Is that because there is a a collection and a disposal contract for each of those? Four. Mm -hmm. Pendleton, Humberts, and Sanitary Disposal are the only true uh, disposal collection franchises. Eastern Oregon Waste Management has only a collection franchise because they take their disposal to Pendleton Sanitary through a private contract between the two. And then, as I explained, the dis quality compost disposal contract is, is not a, 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 a for solid waste. It's simply for the composting company. Very good. Thank you. Any no. further questions? No. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes, Commissioner. I, uh, I will make the motion to approve the franchises, but I would like to have the record also show uh, how fortunate we are to have such a outstanding solid waste committee and that we serve, particularly now with the newest entry, by uh, several outstanding firms. All of them are outstanding firms. I think we're quite fortunate. We don't always remember them. So Thank that was you. a motion. Second. Uh, I think we have to have a motion on each individual. Um, that is correct. Oh, we do. Yeah. Or, uh, each, each, each order. So. Then I'll let Mr. Paper do that. <laughs> okay. Well, Mr. Chair, I move to uh, adopt BCC 2019-020. Second. Move seconded to adopt 2019-020. Further discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Mr. Chair, I move to adopt BCC 2019-021. Move to adopt BCC 2019-020 and seconded. 2-1. A 2-1, excuse me. BCC 2019-021 and it was seconded. Further discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. I make a motion to accept BCC 2019-022. Second. Moved and seconded to adopt BCC 2019-022. Further discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Move to adopt BCC 2019-023. Second. Moved and seconded to adopt BCC 2019-023. Further discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Move to adopt BCC 2019-024. 24 or 25? Seven. 24. I turned two of them, I guess. Move and second to adopt BCC 2019-024. Further discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Move to adopt BCC 2019-025. Second. Move and second to adopt BCC 2019-025. Further discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Move to adopt BCC 2019-026. Second. Move and seconded to adopt BCC 2019-026. Further discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Move to adopt BCC 2019-027. Second. Move and seconded to adopt BCC 2019-027. Further discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Next item on our agenda is appointment of committee, uh, committee appointments for the Solid Waste Committee. Yes, sir. Uh, Commissioner, we have two physicians on the Solid Waste Committee, uh, Mr. Olson, our chair, and Mike McHenry, who have their terms ended January uh, 1st of 2019, and they have both agreed to serve their another term. Okay. There's an order 
for that, which is BCC 2019-019. Is there a motion? Move to adopt. Move to adopt. Second. And seconded to appoint uh, both Mike McHenry, reappoint Mike McHenry and Dennis Olson for the two spots on the committee. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, those in favor, <coughs> excuse me, those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Gina and Dennis, for the presentation and being here this morning. Commissioner, one, uh, one more comment about uh, code enforcement. We were just going to say we're very, very fortunate to have uh, Gina provide the code enforcement for us. And thank you very much for providing for us for having a second a part-time person. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioners. Next item on the agenda is a public hearing for a development code amendment. Uh, the amendment, excuse me, I'll call the hearing to order. The amendment is to Umatilla County's development code 2018-2019, numbers T-19-079. Are there any abstentions or objections to jurisdiction? Hearing none, I'll call for a staff report. Thank you, Commissioner. For the record, Carol Johnson with the Planning Department. Uh, before you are some housekeeping items as well as some additional uh, definitions that were added to our, our development code. Uh, also some clarifications. Uh, the, the text that is recommended for addition has been bolded and underlined. Also text to be removed has been struck through. Um, all of these have been before the Planning Commission, I should say, but one. And that would be on page six, which is a definition for manufacture. Uh, if you turn to page six, that would be an additional one. Um, uh, staff visited with county council, and it was thought it would be appropriate to go ahead and include that at this time. Also, uh, there is a correction that I'd like to bring your attention to on page 16 uh, under item number 18. It says uh, church is an update for churches conditional use section. It says 152.617. It should be 0.616. Uh, that is one change that should be noted. Uh, the, these amendments have come about over the last couple of years uh, as staff runs into uh, issues with uh, implementing the code as well as the, there are just uh, errors here and there that we try to clean up occasionally. This is actually one of two updates that we plan to do, hopefully yet this year. Uh, the second one will, will include those updates that would be to our resource zoned lands, which would be our exclusive farm use and our grazing farm lands. Uh, those will be much more extensive than what you have before you today. So it was thought it might be helpful to break the two apart so we didn't have an even longer document before you at one time. Uh, unless you have any questions from your uh, review of the materials, uh, I don't have anything specific that I feel is very controversial or something that really needs some additional uh, discussion, uh, again, unless there's something that you've, you've noted. So that would be all I have at this time. I'll just... In reading, it, it appears like we're just modernizing primarily and bringing up to date some of the current trends. For example, the dairy farms on, that we didn't have significant yeah. dairy farms in the past, and now they're coming into being. That so one we need was, to yeah, that was something that could have waited to the second update that I mentioned for the exclusive farm use because that's where that will will be applicable. However, uh, we left it into that section at this time. Um, yeah, it, this is an ongoing process. It, no matter how hard you try to, to uh, update and modernize, as you say, uh, the language, uh, there's always something we trip over. So it'll be ongoing. Well, hopefully all of our ordinances are living documents. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone here that wishes to speak in favor 
in favor of this change. Seeing none, I'll call for anyone who wishes to oppose the change. Anyone wishing to oppose? Are there any other public agencies that wish to comment? Since there are no opposition, there'll be no rebuttal. We'll close the hearing and deliberate. The change before us is to adopt the proposed text changes. Mr. Chair, I move we adopt ordinance number 2019-03. Second. Move and second to adopt 2019-03. Further discussion? Seeing hearing none, those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Next item on our agenda is security cameras payment. And I presume, Mr. Lanai, you are here to discuss that. Good morning, Commissioners. Dan Lanai with Administrative Services. And actually, it's, it's not the payable yet. It's just to go ahead and start to work to sign the, uh, the uh, quote so we can commence work on that. Currently, our security cameras that we have, our surveillance cameras here at the courthouse, about a third of them are still the old black and white original ones that we have, and they're very poor resolution. The other ones were replaced at another time, and the resolution on those are not that great. And then recently, we've expanded it and put in a, a newer model with newer cameras on part of the outside, which we are moving to the same unit that we're using to do that. But the unit we re had the state put in with the security upgrades is already failing that unit. Is, so we need to replace that with the, like the newer ones that we're using. Uh, the newer cameras would allow us longer record time so we could go back further than uh, three weeks, which we're doing on, I think, most of our cameras right now. And we, what happens is we have to reduce the resolution in order to get more time. And when we do that, you can't make out exactly what's going on in the uh, video. Newer cameras, we worked with the security team and they placed where they would like to see cameras so they can better observe what's going on in the courtrooms and around the courthouse and in the hallways. The, uh, they're at a higher resolution, a higher storage time or a lo longer storage time that we can have so we can go back further and uh, have better detail on it. We originally, this is part of our five-year plan that we put in with uh, of our capital assets with finance that this year we're going to work on replacing these cameras. Next year our plan is to replace the cameras at the Stafford Hansel building. And um, you know, putting in the security cameras have been very helpful for what we do. We have have a lot of issues and they just seem to keep increasing issues at our facilities and the need for having good security cameras is very important for our safety and also our property, damage to our property or theft of our property. It's helpful in that. We had $30,000 set aside in the capital program to do that, do this project. It came up to almost right at $40,000. And I talked with the state courts, and if we can get it done before June, they are willing to get us $10,000 to make up the difference. So it'll be a co, uh, both of us will be working on it, the state and the county. So for a $40,000 project, we'll be investing $30,000. That was a good idea asking the state courts. So I appreciate them Question. pitching in. Question on the phone. Dan, how, how wide a mark around the courthouse uh, do the cameras work, i.e. the parking lot, public health, the maintenance? I didn't hear the first part of the question. How far will the cameras reach out? Will they go like to public health and to the maintenance shed across the street? Um, right now, they would see the parking lots uh, around the courthouse, the north parking lot, and a little bit the intersection around the clock tower. but. Not necessarily the health department yet, but we're working on doing something that we can connect into it with the health department, but not this plan. I didn't have enough money to do that. Um, and at the same, too, we're 
we're planning to do something at the maintenance shop, but it's not included in this plan because we don't actually have a network link that goes across to there. Um, but we can add those cameras because this system's big enough and we can easily add those into the system as we put them on. Further questions? Thank you. I'd like to also point out that we're being asked, and this, this ordinance or this order allows us to move ahead because there's only one service provider who does this work with this kind of a system and that allows us to not go for competitive estimates. Yeah, basically in this area, they're the only uh, provider. The other part on that, they're already familiar with our system and this is going to integrate with some of the existing equipment that we have and reuse it. Um, originally when the state came in and did the upgrade, we actually had to bring Unitech back in because they some of the things were not working correctly, but um, they threw their hands up and said they weren't going to finish the project. And so um, we had to end up calling them in anyway to finish the what. I have some trouble with some of the people that come in from out of, out of the Portland area. They, they want to come in and put something in, but they don't want to support it or because it's too hard for them to make the travel down here. So with Unitech being right here, um, they usually show up in the middle of the night if we have issues. Yep. And, that, and so their support is fabulous. Absolutely. Yeah. Can't say enough good things about Unitech. So, so before us is a, is a request to adopt order BCC 2019-029 authorized chair to sign a quote from Unitech for security camera upgrade. So moved. It's been moved. Second. And seconded that we adopt the, or the order. Uh, those in favor of uh, adopting BCC 2019-029 signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Commissioners. Also, before you, is uh, payable for the oldest elevators. Next item on the agenda is that. And this is just basically routine cost that we have to do every year. Uh, we're required to keep maintenance on our elevators in order to operate them and have them licensed. And uh, just since it's over the 5,000, it just needs to be signed and approved. Uh, this is for the Stafford Hansel Stafford uh, building. Uh, do we have the same elevator? I've never looked down to see who, who the second elevator was well, manufactured by. Is it also an Otis? I'm not sure if the Stafford Hansel is actually manufactured by Otis, but they do the support. I can't remember. Okay. I, I have to double check that, but this one here is Otis. And... Um, they do the maintenance here. I, I thought Jolene did something where she was able to get better maintenance through Otis than the other contractor, but I would have to double check on that, to be honest with you. I, I know the elevator here has less problems than the elevators we have over there. Yeah, 50s, I think they just made things with um, better metal, not from places outside the United States. I don't Probably care. very likely, <laughs> isn't it? But it, uh, it also has its nor'easter that flows through any time the wind blows. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. The, before us is a request to uh, approve a payable to Otis Elevator Company in the amount of $6,617.57. So moved. Second. Moved to approve. Uh, moved and seconded. Uh, any discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Thank you Dan. Commissioners. Next item is a purchase contract on asphalt. Mr. Fellows. I saw Tom was on the agenda, so I'm filling up my coffee cup. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Commissioners. Tom Fellows, Public Works Director. So um, we went out for our annual bids for our chip seal oil emulsified asphalt product. Uh, we received three bids. Uh, Idaho Asphalt, Western States Asphalt, and Albina Asphalt. Uh, the, um, the bids came in, and uh, Idaho Asphalt was the low bidder in the process, and so we're recommending that the board accept Idaho Asphalt as the uh, contract for the, our emulsified asphalt this year. They're signif significantly less, aren't they, at 397 versus 432 next up? My conversations with other counties is uh, we got a really good price this year. I, for whatever reason, Idaho Asphalt really wanted our business, so they they came in and, and uh, uh, did us a very very fine job. Very good. 
and and we've used them in the past. We've actually we've we have experience with all three of these contractors. They're all all very very good to deal with all three of them, and we've never had any problem with any of them. So good. It's a pretty tough price to beat. So it really is. And they come out. Where's Hauser, Idaho? Uh, up by Rathdrum, up by okay, Coeur North, North Idaho. Yeah, North Idaho. How do they how do they deliver the product? In in uh, eight thousand gallon tanker trucks. Eight thousand gallon tanker yeah. truck. Thir th works out to about thirty two tons per load wow. of product. Okay. Further discussion? A requested action is authorized contract for purchase of CRS two asphalt from for two thousand nineteen ship sealing projects from Idaho Asphalt Supply for three hundred ninety seven dollars per ton. So moved. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve. Do it to authorize. Uh, further discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Next item on our agenda is a to authorize a purchase of a Polaris machine of some kind that I'm sure we're going to hear about. <laughs> Tom Fellows, emergency, or Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Just got promoted, Tom. You, you get to ride the, the Polaris. Tom, <laughs> no, go ahead. Not. I just gave him the information necessary. <laughs> Good morning, Commissioners. Tom Roberts, Matilda County Emergency Manager. Um, I come to you again in regards to this matter. Uh, we approached uh, the, the board uh, a couple months ago to request to put out for bid for the purchase of a um, utility uh, transport vehicle or a UTV, which is essentially a um, six-person cabbed um, Polaris all-terrain vehicle with a, a, a bed, like a, pick, a small pickup truck bed in the back. Um, we received a grant from the, uh, from the through the State of Oregon Office of Emergency Management from FEMA for the amount not to exceed $48,838. Um, we put out for bid um, through your authority uh, for the purchase of, of a unit. The, um, the bids, we received one bid, as I recall, um, and it was for 20000 over the maximum amount allotted. And so we declined that, that purchase and uh, went back to the drawing board and determined that we could actually go out through SourceWell uh, which is the, uh, the the quote that we have attached to today to purchase directly from Polaris Defense, the the exact unit that we need. Um, the purchase price for that unit, um, as quoted, is forty five thousand nine hundred and thirty two dollars and eighty three cents, um, which would be reimbursed upon receipt um, and from the forty eight thousand eight hundred and thirty eight dollars. So what I'm asking uh, the board to do is authorize us to pr uh, proceed with the procurement of this ATV, UTV unit um, with the understanding that we will be reimbursed um, upon receipt. Tom, so, it's a four-wheeler, not a tracked vehicle. It's actually both. It comes with tires on it, but it has tracks that can be uh, substituted for snow use. Um, the original um, intent for this is to utilize it as a mass casualty incident response vehicle. There, there are potential other applications that come with it. For instance, because it will be outfitted with a medical skid, we will be able to use it at the Umatilla County Fair, Pharmacy for Rodeo for uh, medical responses on the grounds, or perhaps uh, at, at other events such as the Pendleton Roundup for medical personnel to use in areas where they can't necessarily get an ambulance and, and transport people out. Um, but this is to help fill a gap that was um, uh, determined needed after the 2012 bus crash when we needed to get off road and transport patients up a hillside in the snow. Um, we had a unit similar to this brought in from Walla Walla County that uh, served that purpose later on the incident and now we are trying to um, add to our own capabilities for this for this purpose. You have one of these already, right? A uh, version, the though? Sheriff's Office Patrol Division has one identical to this one. We actually had put in for this particular grant before they acquired that. Uh, however, that unit regularly sees um, patrol activities up 
up in some of the parks and on some of the trails, and so it's not necessarily a, uh, immediately available. This unit would help us to not only have it available for mass casualty response, but also be available for search and rescue applications in those instances when the other one is is. When, I know the, uh, the the one that the sheriff's office has. It was currently made the media recently with uh, Deputy John Roberts and Deputy uh, uh, Rick Carter. They actually rescued a kid and uh, that, correct. Uh, so I think that's pretty good use of these things. It is. And the original intent of this project was, was actually bigger than just the UTV. It was um, the UTV plus the capability of having a, a tow behind um, a trailer that would also serve to haul a second non-ambulatory individual. Because of the cost overruns, we've had to go ahead and push that back into a phase two. So we'll go after additional grant funding in the future to uh, to see this uh, project to full completion. But this will give us the the, um, the the backbone, if you will, of the intent based on the grant dollars that have been awarded now. So you still have approximately um, $2,900 remaining Correct. on the grant to... Now, the trailer you're talking about purchasing in this, mm -hmm. is it a trailer to haul the vehicle or is it a trailer to pull behind the vehicle to bring people out? The the one that we will uh, purchase now will be to deploy the unit to the site. So to the, haul it. Yes, to haul it. Um, and it's a scaled down version of what we originally intended. The the larger version that will be needed, uh, we will work on in phase two. So. Have you priced the trailer at all? Do you know how close you are? Uh, the you purchase, the purchase price for the trailer that the sheriff's office currently has was right around the $1,500 range, and so we're kind of working on that probability with some some potential funds left over. But I haven't w reached out for quotes as yet. I want to get the uh, the major purchase accomplished because we're on a timeline with them, and then try to work within our our remaining funds to locate a trailer locally hopefully that would suit, suit the bill for transport. Um, and then if there's any funds beyond that left over, we would just um, uh, purchase whatever small items that we can that were originally intended on the grant to, to, to use up the rest of the grant dollars. Very good. Other questions? No. Is there a motion? Uh, so moved. Been moved to authorize Second. purchase of the Polaris from Polaris Sales in the amount of forty-five thousand nine hundred thirty-two dollars and eighty-three cents. And did I hear a second? Yep. Yes. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Those if further discussion. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you. Next item on our agenda is the appointment to the housing authority board. Who's do it, Doug, are you presenting that? Uh, yes. Uh, there is currently a vacant on the Matilla County Housing Authority Board, and Deborah Wainwright uh, has indicated willingness to serve and is interested in doing so, and it, she is recommended for appointment to the board. So move. Second. Move and seconded to adopt BCC 2019-028 appointing Deborah Wainwright to the Umatilla County Housing Authority Board. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is an authorization to issue requests for, ve for proposals for vehicles. This is uh, coming before the board uh, be for a uh, purchase of a new vehicle for the Board of Commissioners. This is to replace the Explorer that will be sold to the Community Corrections uh, for use in their program. Okay. The request before us is to authorize issuance of a request for proposals for a new vehicle for, for commissioners. Uh, I might add that what that the net effect of it will be putting a relatively high gas mileage vehicle in the, into lesser use and uh, acquiring a vehicle which should receive better gas mileage for the county. Is there any discussion? I don't have the specs here, but uh, does this speak to immediate purchase rather than uh, waiting 150 days? It does not specifically say that. 
but it could be could be amended. Yeah, I think I, I think it's expeditious for us to to uh, ask and get so we can get it to the community questions more quickly to amend it to to indicate uh, something in stock. Uh, what we normally do as part of the request for proposal, we'll put that the time of delivery will be a factor in the consideration of the purchase. That's fine. Okay. <coughs> Further discussion? Seeing, hearing none, those in favor say aye. Oh, wait, actually, was that no. a motion? No, yeah. it's, already, it's oh. already said, isn't it? Oh, is it I, I hear a motion <coughs> or a second. Maybe I'm Doug, would you restate what you what you just said about? Oh, basically, what we'll put in the request for proposal is that the uh, time of delivery <coughs> will be an uh, item of consideration. A factor. The right. So that basically means that if you get two bids and one's available now that might be more expensive, you can take the higher bid. Did you need to further modify it? Yeah, it, we'll just put I that mean, in the request. Commissioner? Modify what? That Does that take care of the concern? No, my only concern was, was there a motion in a second? Right. Oh. I didn't hear a motion oh, oh, or a oh. second. <laughs> I, I, I did the motion. Okay, he made the motion, I'll second. Okay. <laughs> now we can ask for a now, vote. Now, now okay. let's vote on that. <laughs> Those in favor say aye. 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 Was that an abstain on the, on the phone? No, I said I. <laughs> Next item no, on the agenda sorry. is the Columbia Development Authority grant match. Uh, this is coming before the board because uh, the dollar amount exceeds $5,000. The county received an invoice uh, for its portion of the Department of Defense grant match. For the Columbia Development Authority, uh, the county's portion would be $8,501. And I, I believe, is that not for a longer period than just one year? Well, I think they're making up some time on this, too, that they, they were going through a change of office administration and didn't bill timely. That from the invoice, there are two that are referenced to from April 1st of 2018 through the end of the year. Um, and then there's another portion of $4,000 without a time reference on it. So that probably is for an earlier period. I think that catches everything up. Is there any discussion? We are asked to approve payment to Columbia Development Authority in the amount of $8,501. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded to approve. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. I believe that concludes our agenda for today. Are there any reports commissioners would like to make? There's one I'd like to hear, and that's uh, from Commissioner Schaefer. Uh, if anything unusual happened at AOC on Monday. Well, I will let you know as soon as I go on Monday. <laughs> hey, is it next Monday? It's this coming Monday, yes. Uh, Commis well, Commissioner asking I'll the be. same thing. <laughs> the second time I've been asked that today. Now I've got to double check my calendar. <laughs> um, oh, you missed it. <laughs> yeah. uh, one thing I have was uh, yesterday, uh, last evening, I had the honor of being a, a water judge for the Pacific Northwest Clean Water Association. And the first place was unanimous. It was uh, Wallowa City Water won the uh, contest. All three judges were unanimous. Um, the second place one, however, was uh, from the city of Echo. So they took second place in our water testing. Um, Probably what I didn't mention was that there's only two entries in the uh, contest. So, but uh, I'll take a win for you, Matilla County. Echo took uh, second place. That's that's how I'm going to look at it. So that's the only thing I have. Where was Athena's water? Well, I'm sure Athena would have won the uh, contest had they put their water in the in the contest. But unfortunately, we uh, we didn't put one in. So. Any uh, any other reports? I have no nothing to add. Commissioner Murdoch. Nope. Okay. I, I did attend, on Friday. I did attend the first meeting of the finance and audit committee, 
And you might be interested to know there are about three or four committees at AOC that deal with finance, audit, budget, and uh, we made a motion to take to the board the idea that we consolidate all of the different functions into a single ways and means committee for AOC rather than having four separate tasks for a certain committee. So that, that might appear at Monday, John, and, and I think it's really important to go that way. Suddenly I feel like Charlie Brown in front of the teacher. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Burdock. We're missing you here. We'll be glad when you're back. And with that, we stand adjourned. Thank you.